Good morning. Welcome to East Albemarle Church of God YouTube Facebook broadcast. <clears throat> Welcome. Thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, we hope we'll be a blessing to you this morning. Let me remind you that our service times are Sunday morning is 1030 till 12 o'clock. Uh, evening service on Sundays at 630 p.m. Wednesday night service at 7 o'clock. We invite you to come be with us if you live in the vicinity. We'd be glad to have you. If you'd like to contact us, our address is East Avon Mall Church of God, 1110 East Main Street, Avon Mall NC, 28001. That's East Avon Mall Church of God, 1110 East Main Street, Avon Mall NC, 28001. One. We'd be glad to hear from you. Drop us a line. Like us on Facebook or YouTube. Uh, share us with your friends. I'll guarantee you that we will share some breaking uh, things that God has dealt with us about, and we hope it'll be a blessing to you. We thank you for listening. Uh, we thank you for tuning in weekly. We have a, a, a good number that's watching our broadcast is on Sunday, and Thank you for that. We're going right into the Sunday morning service live. Uh, we hope it'll be a blessing to you. God bless. Have your Bibles this morning. Turn with me to the book of Exodus, the 12th chapter. Exodus, the 12th chapter. Pray for me this morning. This could easily turn into something else that I'm not ready to do. Exodus, the 12th chapter, I want to minister to you this morning. I want to talk to you this morning about what I believe the church needs. Share with you this morning what I believe God has dealt with me about for this service today. Trust God to speak to your heart this morning. You say it's good to have you here this morning. We got a nice looking crowd this morning, haven't we? Nice looking crowd. Praise the Lord. We got about uh, 25 that won't come because they're afraid they're going to catch some. That's all right. We're going to try to keep you safe. We're going to try to keep you safe. You can't believe nothing you hear on television anymore. You just can't believe nothing. One guy comes on and says you can get it without knowing you got it. From somebody that didn't know they got it. Another guy says, oh, no, you can't do that. you got to have symptoms. One guy comes on and said, the masks work like a charm. Wear your mask and everything be all right. And then somebody else comes on behind him. All of them's got credentials and all of them's got doctor behind their name and all of them's got this research and stuff. And the next one comes on and said, mask ain't worth wearing. <laughs> you know, so I guess it's all a matter of your preference. It don't cost you nothing to wear a mask except for the price of the mask. So, if you want to wear a mask, I'm saying, wear it. Praise God. So, Judy almost bought me one yesterday. <laughs> what do you mean, huh? <laughs> she found the mask yesterday. Crossed the, she didn't buy it. Across the front of it said, this mask is just as worthless as my governor. <laughs> oh, my my goodness, I thought I don't know why I could wear that or not. I couldn't wear it in church because we might have some folks in churches all for the governor. That's all right. That's what makes America work. Exodus, the 12th chapter. New Year's. Happy New Year. Happy New Year again. This is the second year Sunday in the New Year, so Happy New Year again. I'm going to talk about New Year sort of a roundabout way this morning. Share with you. 12th chapter, the first verse. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months, and it shall be the first month of the year to you. So God told Aaron and Moses, Moses and Aaron, this is going to be New Year for you, starting today. We'll just read a little more. I know I don't have it on the board, but I'm going to read a little more. Make you want to bring your Bible next time. He said, speaking to the congregation of Israel, saying, 
in the tenth day of the month, take you shall they shall take unto them every man a lamb according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for a house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next to his house take it according to the number of the souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your account for the lamb. He said, you take a lamb for every house and if well, your house can't eat up a whole lamb, invite your neighbors over. Until you've got enough folks in the house that can eat the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. You shall take it from among the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it up until the fourteenth day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. They shall take of the blood, strike it on the two sides post and the upper doorpost of the houses wherein they shall eat. They shall eat the flesh in that night roasted with fire and unleavened bread with bitter herbs shall they eat it. Let's jump down to verse 12. Verse 11. For thus shall ye eat it with your loins, loins girded, your shoes on your feet, ready to go, and your staff in your hand. You shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover, for I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and will smite all the firstborn of the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. Father, we love you and we praise you and we thank you, God, for your blessing. God, we ask you today to help us, Lord. Communicate your word, God. What you've given me, Lord, I want to be able to give to this congregation, God, and to lift them up, God. Heavenly Father, that every one of us might be obedient to you, Lord, in every way. Father, we ask in Jesus' name, give you the praise, glory, and honor. Amen. You may be seated. Uh, welcome you this morning, East Albemarle Church of God. Those that are viewing by Facebook that can't be here, we welcome you. We hope God blesses you today in a glorious way. Talking this morning again about New Year's. I've been talking about change over the past few weeks and uh, I, I want to speak again this morning about the change that I believe God will give us if we'll obey Him and follow Him and allow Him to do what He wants to do in our lives. I, I believe we're in need of a change in America uh, today, especially the church world of America today. I, I believe there's a great need in the, in, in the church of America to make a change, and that change is carrying us back to God. What I want you to understand this morning is that God basically give us two principles or two areas of life to where we need to really pay attention to. And if we'll pay attention to these two areas of life, God will bless us and we'll be the people God wants us to be. You don't have to worry about all this other stuff that's going on, all this stuff that's side going on. Uh, you don't have to worry too much about that. There's two areas of life that God tells us that we need to worry about, that we need to concentrate our lives on. And I want to talk about those two areas of life this morning as we start the new year. The first area is... Is the great commitment what we commit to God. The second area is the great commission and both of these work out of the same principle and they work off the same uh, logic in these two areas. The great commitment that God commands us or the great commandment or the great commitment. Matthew 22 and 36 the Bible reads like this. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind and with all thy strength. All thy mind, this is the first and the great commandment and the second like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Listen to what Jesus said to the lawyer. He asked him a question trying to trip him up. He said, what's the greatest commandment? Jesus said, here it is. Love God with all your heart, mind, and soul. He went on to say, in the book of Luke, and your strength. So sometimes I try to add that in just because I've read it so many times in the different places. See, Jesus said to the lawyer, 
here. He said, this is the great commandment. Love God with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your soul. Just love God with everything in you. Can I tell you today, there's no greater work for a human being to do than love God with all of his heart, mind, and soul. When you love God with all your heart, mind, and soul, you've done the greatest thing that a human being can possibly do on the face of this earth. That's acknowledging God and committing yourself to God. Can I tell you today, you'll never rise above your love for God in your life. You'll never get greater than your love is for God. Out of the love we have for God, every issue of life flows freely out of our life. In other words, everything that's involved in your life can relate back to how much you love God or if you love God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength. So you understand, here's why all the law and the commandments hang on these two uh, these two commandments is love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Because when you love God like that, everything in your life comes out of that love for God that you have in your life. We need to love God. The walk of a Christian is to be committed to God. Everything. Not give up anything. And when you're committed to God, that governs everything that comes out of your life. That governs every aspect of your life. If you love God, you won't do things God don't want you to do. If you love God, you will do things God wants you to do. If you love God, you'll live the way God wants you to live. If you don't live the way God wants you to live, it's because you don't really love God. You love yourself more than you love God. So I'm telling you today, Jesus tells us in this passage of Scripture, here's something you need to pay attention to. You need to love God with all your heart, mind, and soul. And you need to love your brother as yourself on these two things the, the whole commandments and the law of the Old Testament hang uh, you understand uh, both of these are pretty much wrapped up in one if you love God with all your heart mind and soul you'll want to love your neighbor Matthew 28 19 Jesus said Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you he said, go you therefore and teach all nations. Why would we want to do that? Because we love our neighbors ourselves. If I love my neighbors myself, I don't want to see them die and go to hell. If I love my neighbors myself, I want to see them have a right relationship with my God. So if I love God with all my heart, soul, and mind, can I tell you today, then I'm obligated to love my neighbor. I'm obligated to tell my neighbor about the love of God and, and let him know the truth of God and what God will do. The, the Bible tells us that on these two things, the the church must must do these and we must be involved in these and on these two things our lives are contained if we love God with all of our heart mind and soul then we'll love our neighbors ourselves on these two things the church stands or falls and we need to get back to the place to where we really fall in love with God again so we can learn how to love our neighbors see our text this morning is about a new year and I want to talk about new years for a little bit all that was free there. That was just getting me ready and wound up. All that love God and love your neighbor. That was just free. Uh, here's what I want to talk about. I want to talk about New Year. A text that I read to you. God told Moses and Aaron, this will be a New Year to you. It's two times in the Bible that Israel had New Year. This was one time when they was being delivered from Egypt. The other time was when they were standing on the border of Jordan River fixing to go across and possess Canaan land. In our world, New Year is the time of making resolutions and setting goals. And I think that's important. I think you ought to improve yourself. You can set goals and you can hold on to them. That's fine. I, and if you fail, that's fine too. If it's all right with you, it's all right with me. I'm not much of a resolution setter. I, I, before I got saved, I made resolutions and I turned over new leaves and I, I, I done everything I knowed how to do. I rehabilitated myself from some terrible things that was going on in my life, but I was still that same old evil person that I was before until I built down in an altar one day, accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior of my life. But in our day, we, we, we look at New Year's as a time to change, but I'm telling you, New Year's for the nation of Israel was a 
total revolutionary change in their life. Israel had been in bondage for 400 years. They, they was the service to the nation of Egypt. And, and this night, on 14th day of the first month, God said, I'm going to set you free. I, I'm going to give you deliverance. The Bible New Year was a total change of life for everybody that would obey God. You understand? If you don't obey God, you might not get a new year. But if you'll obey God, God will give you a new year. And you're going to know that before I get through today. God commanded his people, start the preparation. Start preparing yourself for what's going to come. I'm telling you today, we in America need to start preparing ourselves for what's going to come. Because there might be a link to what happened in Israel or in Egypt when Israel was delivered and what happens in America in the day that we live on. He told them, I want you to prepare yourself. Here's what God told them. He said on the 10th day of the month, that's 10 days from now, told Abraham, Moses, and Aaron, said tell the children of Israel, 10 days from now, I want you to get a lamb, not just any old lamb, but I want you to get a, a lamb without spot and a lamb without blemish. I want you to put him up in a stall for four days until the 14th day at the month. And then at sundown on the 14th day, that's in the evening before we would call the day coming. At 6 o'clock, at 5.59, it's the 13th. On 6.01, it's the 14th. So the, that was the beginning of the day, the, the evening before. He said, I want you to take that lamb and I, I want you to slaughter that lamb. And I want you to take the blood and put it on the doorpost and the lintel over the top of the door. And said, I want you to go inside and I want you to be closed. Your, your furniture packed, everything ready to move. And I want you to go inside. I want you to eat that lamb. And at midnight, I'm going to send the angel of death through all the land. And I'm going to judge Egypt for what they've done. And I'm going to go through the land and I'm going to kill every firstborn of people and all the firstborn of the animals of the people that don't have the blood on the doorpost and the lintel of the house and that night, that fateful night God sent the angel through and Egypt woke up dead people. They had dead in every place. Every family had a dead person. Every family had their cattle was dead. There was death all around. Why it was worse than, than COVID-19 is in the world today. I mean every family had somebody that died the same night. Israel rose up, uh, Egypt rose up, and literally threw Israel out of the land. They'd held them bondage. They were slaves. But on this night, Egypt got all their gold, got all their silver, got all their jewels, and took it down to where Israel was at. Said, here, take this and get out of the land. They just, they just spoiled them right there because God sent a plague and that plague killed all the firstborn in the nation of Egypt. But Israel, if they had the blood on the doorpost. Praise God the death angel passed over and nobody died. Let me tell you what that is. That's mercy in judgment. I want you to get that in your mind. Mercy in judgment. God was judging Egypt. And Israel was right in the middle of Egypt. And Israel got mercy. And Egypt got wrath. In the middle of wrath. On Egypt, mercy was poured out on God's people. Mercy came during the time God was judging the nation for the evil in it. For Israel, it was out with the old and a new life ahead. For Egypt, it was judgment. Judgment they wouldn't get over for a long time. I thought about that and I thought about this. We're living in a very much similar day today in America. An American church. We're living in the very similar day. And I'm not sure. I don't want to call this prophecy. But I'm not sure. But what? America's not fixing to see the judgment of God come on it. I'm not sure that we're not looking at the beginning of the judgment of God. I mean we're living in a nation where not only can have an abortion. But the baby can be born and then have it aborted. We're living in a nation where we're killing our heritage. We're living in a nation where we're turning against God. Don't want nothing to do with God. In our government, they've about turned God out. Now it's a man and a woman. <laughs> and the God of all these foreign gods and these foreign religions. I'm not sure America's not looking right now at judgment coming. 
I'm telling you today, God can send judgment on a nation, but yet out of the midst of that nation, he can deliver his people who will obey him. Can I tell you today, if we'll just get ourselves and our minds back on God and get our hearts back on God and love God with all of our heart, mind, and soul, praise God, I'm telling you that even in the midst of, de- in the midst of destruction, God can give deliverance. In the midst of wrath, God can give mercy. In the midst of judgment, God can sal- give salvation to his people. People, people around you be dropping like flies, but you'll be standing up being the person that God wants you to be. I just come this morning to tell you, praise God, in this new year, we need a new you so that we can be the people God has ordained us to be. Whoo, glory. I don't know about you, but I, I can't go too far on that because I get out off, the, off the place. I got something else God told me to tell you. I want you to understand how it worked. God told Moses and Aaron, said, now, today's the first day of the year. I want you to tell Israel on the 10th to get a lamb. On the 14th, I want you to kill and put the blood on the doorpost. Because that night at midnight, that's like after sundown today, that's tomorrow night at midnight. Or tonight at midnight. I'm going to come, the death angel's going to kill Egypt, and they're going to throw you out of the land. So, eat it with your clothes on, your feet on, your shoes on. Not your feet. Hope you don't take them off. Eat it with your shoes on. Be ready to go. Have the horse out back and the oxen and whatever it is hooked to the wagon and all your stuff on it. We're leaving tonight at midnight. We're going to leave in the night. Notice he said, I want you to get a, a lamb without spot or blemish. A lamb of the first year. A lamb that's a pure lamb. And I want you to bring it in and offer it. That lamb was a sacrifice for the family. A sacrifice for the family. Notice it was the best that they had. They couldn't give them second best. They couldn't give third best. They couldn't give what was left over. Had to pick out a lamb. Wasn't the best of lambs. Give the best they had. That lamb represented Jesus going up Golgotha's hill, hanging on Calvary and dying for you and I. That's our sacrifice. That's the sacrifice for our salvation. That lamb sacrificed on Golgotha has provided us for forgiveness of sin, that we can be free from sin and serve a living God. That lamb that they killed there that night on Passover, that sacrifice, it gave them the ability to leave out of the bondage that they were in and to live in the new land that God had took them to. Their instruction was plain and, and, and it was all they had to do was do what God told them to do. They didn't have to make nothing happen. They didn't have to fight Egypt. They didn't have to have a war with Egypt. All they had to do was follow the instructions of God. Can I tell you today, church, all we have to do is follow the instruction of God. And if we'll follow God's instruction and be obedient to Him, God will judge the world and He will give us salvation everywhere you go. I don't know about you, but I'm not going down. I'm going up. Praise God. I'm going to ride on the glorious Holy Ghost all the way into glory. I'm going to be where Jesus is at. I'm not going down. I'm going to ride into heaven. Praise God. On a chair of the Holy Ghost. We're living in a American church world a lot like Malachi's day. They were offering the blind, the maimed, and the lame. Going out to the flock and getting what was left over. That's the way America's doing today. Let me explain something to you. God requires different things from Christians than He does from sinners. A sinner can live by hook and crook. Cheat everybody. Be crooked as he can be. He's a sinner. And he can prosper. And he'll live in a million dollar house. And have a, a nice cars. And have money in the bank. Everything to come up roses for him. He's going to die and go to hell. But he's a sinner. A Christian on the other hand can't do that. Because when a Christian lives by hook or crook. It's a reflection on his God. And God said I'm not going to be defamed. So you understand. In the Bible it tells the Christian, you give your tithe and I'll sew the holes up in your bag. There won't be holes in the evil man's bag because his God's not God. His God's the devil. 
devil don't care how he lives. He's not going to judge him. In the, in a sinner, he can do anything he wants to do and everything's all right. But our God tells us, don't partake of the Lord when you're guilty because if you're guilty, he said that's the reason many sleep and are weak and are feeble. Doing, taking the communion. Unworthy. That's the reason many people are sick. Many people are uh, feeble, and many people are dead. The word sleep means dead. So you understand, there's a difference between what God will let a Christian get by with and what he'll let a sinner get by with. Listen, Russia, Iran, and China can do anything they want to do. God's not going to get involved much with them. Unless it's coming to some of his people, he forbids it. But as far as what they have for the world and who they serve, God don't give a flip about them. You understand, they're not God. They live for the devil, they're serving the devil. But I'm telling you, America is a Christian nation. And when America turns her back on her God, I'm telling you, we're blaspheming God. And God's not going to let us by. I'm telling you this morning, judgment's coming to America. If America don't change, judgment's coming. But I'm telling you also, that in the midst of judgment, God's going to deliver those who are obedient to Him, who keep His word, and who live the way He tells us to live. Judgment is coming on them, but glory to God, it's coming victory for us. Whoo, glory. Uh, it's kind of strong, ain't it? Uh, something I want you to understand. It's really simple how to get by and miss the judgment. What is it, Pastor? Just be obedient to God. Just follow the instructions. Just follow what He said. You don't have to worry about a whole lot of stuff. You don't have to have a degree in theology. You don't even have to have a high school graduate. You don't even have to read and write. You don't even have to be able to talk. All you got to do is obey God. Listen, the key to it is obeying God. The key to everything is obeying God. What is his instructions, Pastor? I told you a while ago. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. Love God. If you love God with all your heart, soul, and mind, I'm telling you today, you'll live the way God wants you to live. And if you live the way God wants you to live, when Jesus splits that sky and the trumpet sounds and the voice of archangel blasts blast is out, I'm telling you, the dead in Christ arise first. And we who remain that keep his word, who love him with all of our heart, mind, and soul, we're going to be delivered out of this world. And the devil can have it. The Antichrist can have it. Praise God, we're going to be delivered. In the midst of judgment, God's going to deliver his children. It doesn't make a difference if America goes to hell in a handbasket. God's people are not going to hell. We're going up. Praise God. I said we're going up. I said we're going up. We're not going down. We're going up. How are we going up? Because we obey God. If you obey God, you're going up. If you don't obey God, I'm sorry. Look. Love should grow. The more we serve God, the more we ought to love God. You ought to love God more now than you did 10 years ago. I met Judy. And uh, she was hiding behind them foster grants. I thought, oh, that's the prettiest woman I ever seen. Whew, look at that. That's Doug. I said, oh, who was that? That was Judy. Judy? That's my neighbor. You met her. No, I believe I'd have remembered that. I don't believe I have. Come find out I hadn't. I've been to her house before. She wasn't there. Probably went off with one of them heathens that she used to date before she met me. <laughs> I said, I believe I, I'm going to call her. So as that fellow was with me, I said, uh, wonder why her phone number is. Well, he knowed. I remembered. I went and called her. I thought she was beautiful. I thought she had a great personality, but I didn't love her. Y'all understand that, don't you? I didn't love her. I thought I could like her, buddy. Ooh, look at her. I look good on her own. It made me look good. But over the next few months, 
I worried her to death. And the more I was around her, the more I loved her. Six months later, we got married. Some people said it wouldn't last. We didn't know each other long enough. It ain't been but 53 years. Soon be 54. <laughs> but I love her more now than I did then. Have you heard that fellow selling jewelry on radio? He said, you need an anniversary ring. And the woman says, well, what's an anniversary ring? He said, it's a ring that's twice as nice as the one you give her when you ask her to marry you. She said, why is that? He said, because you love her twice as much now as you did when you married her. She said, oh, I like that. I guess a woman would like that. She's the one getting the ring. <laughs> but that's what I want you to get across. The more you love God, the longer you love God, the more you can love God. The more you know how to love God. The more able you are to give your love to God. As the days go by in our relationship, it ought to get stronger and stronger and stronger. If you love God, you ought to be wanting to be in His presence. Judy's daddy said, we couldn't even throw dishwater out the back door without first looking to make sure Harry wasn't there. If you love God, you ought, to, you ought to want to be in His presence. Here's another thing. If you love God, you're going to have to give up all sin. If you don't give up sin, you love yourself more than you do God. When you sin, that means you love yourself more than you love God. So loving God with all your heart, mind, and soul means you've got to give up all sin. If you love God, you want to be like God. If you love God, you'll love God's children. I like that one. If you love God, you'll love His church because His church basically is His children. That's the reason I sang the family of God this morning because we're just the family of God. If you love God, then you've got to love me because I'm your brother and sister. You know how brothers and sisters are in a home? Man, I grew up with four. I was the youngest and I took most of the blunt of it. But I saw us fight, fall out in the street, in the yard. We didn't have streets where I lived at. Fall out in the yard and fight and holler and hurt each other up. Go in the house. And by the time supper time got there, uh, the one that beat you up while he goes serving you and said, Are you all right? I'm sorry I skit you up like that. So when you're the littlest one, you, you, they tell you that. When you're the oldest one, you have to apologize. And say, I'm sorry I skit you up like that. <laughs> We're family. I don't care what kind of disagreements you have with anybody in the family. You ought to go to them before the sun sets and you ought to make it right. I'm telling you, if you love God, you ought to love God's children. You ought to love the family. You ought to love the church. If you love God, you ought to love your neighbor as yourself. You don't want yourself to go to hell. You ought not to want your neighbor to go to hell. If we want to find mercy in the midst of judgment in our world, we're going to have to get back to the obeying God. See, here's, here's what I want you to understand. Israel didn't have to do anything but obey God. You need to understand this. They didn't have to do anything. They didn't have to get the army up. They didn't have to call out the National Guard. They didn't have to get the policemen out. All they had to do was Obey God. Kill a lamb. Put it on the doorpost. God done the rest. God's the one that caused Egypt to be humble to their knees. God's the one that sent the death angel through. Kill all the firstborn. And God's the one made Egypt bring their jewels and their gold and their silver down and give it to Israel. God did all of that. All Israel did was obey God. I'm telling you today, all you've got to do is obey God and God will make the change in your life. We don't make the change. All we do is obey God and God makes the change. If God don't make the change, there won't be a change in your life. We've got to obey God. What are we going to do, Pastor? Love God with all your heart, mind, and soul. And Luke said strength. And your neighbor as yourself. That's what God's telling us to do. Listen, when I got saved, all I did was ask God to forgive me. That's all I know to do. I, I said, Father, I want you to forgive me in Jesus' name. Save me and forgive my sins. That's all I did. God made a change in me. How did he do it? I don't know how he done it. He did though. 
It was God that forgave my sins. I couldn't get my sins. I didn't have to go out and make restitution for all these things I'd done and offer sacrifice. God already took care of that. I obeyed God. God done the rest. God's the one who changed my behavior. Behavior is what you do. You behave. Your behavior is the things you do. I was ashamed of a lot of the stuff I did before I got saved, but God forgave all of that. He took care of all that. Had to make some restitution, but outside of that, I'm telling you, God took care of the change. All I had to do was be obedient to God. God's the one made me into a new man. Old man died and a new man stood. I didn't have to try. I didn't have to get down and say, uh, I'm just going to do it. I'm 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 going to do it. All I done was obey God and God took care of the rest of it. Yeah. See how that works? It was God that made a difference in my life. It was God to transform my life. All I did was be obedient. All Israel done was been obedient. And God took care of all the rest. If we'll continue to be obedient to God, God will change us. He'll change the church of America, but America has first got to get back to the instruction of God. What is it? Love God with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. Until we get back to that, we can't expect God to do anything for us. So, this new year, why don't you let God change you? We're going to do that, Pastor. Just by obeying Him. Just fall in love with Him again. Too many people in the church world are trying to change their self. Trying to make their mind up. I had a fellow tell me one time, once I get my mind made up, I can do anything. No, you can't. I done tried that. I'm a pretty strong-willed person. I cleaned myself up from all kinds of habits and all kinds of bad behavior I had, but I was still that old sinful heathen that I was before. I just didn't have as bad a Habits, for lack of a better word. I couldn't change myself. Make my mind up or nothing. All I done was give my heart to Jesus and he changed me. I didn't sit around at night that night saying, I'm going to have to watch what I say tomorrow. I just quit cussing. You've heard people say he cussed like a sailor. I was a sailor. Three years, eight months, and 16 days. And my mouth was nasty. And I've had to ask God to forgive me for it. I've had to go to some people and say, forgive the way I talked around you. I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean that. What happened? Because I love God. Now I want everybody to understand, I love God. I fell in love with God that night. I'm telling you today, if you'll fall in love with God and just be obedient to what God shows you to do today, God will change your life forever. You be obedient. God takes care of the change. All Israel done was kill the lamb that they killed a thousand times before and caught his blood like they'd done a hundred times before and sprinkled it on the doorpost and went inside while the death angel passed over. It was God that killed Egypt. It was God that caused Egypt to humble themselves and cast Israel out of the land. It was God that delivered Israel. All Israel had to do was be obedient to God. All you got to do is be obedient to God. Just obey him. See, here's the way it works. God gives us a sense, for lack of a better word. I could say feeling, but it's not a feeling. It's a sense. He, he, he puts a, a sense inside of us that what we need to do where we need to go, or what we need to be. He just puts a sense. It's not a thought. It's not as great as a thought. And it's not as frivolous as a feeling. It's a sense. It's kind of like hearing. I, I can hear you, but I don't know how I can hear you. Of course, with these hearing aids, it helps. Doesn't get too close and then the squeal. <laughs> I can be around you and I can almost tell you when we walk away for two minutes I can almost tell you with, within two minutes of being around you whether you like me don't like me or could care less about me how do you know that? I don't have a clue I don't have a clue it's a sense that's what I'm talking about God puts a sense inside of us and that's God leading us in our lives. When we obey that sense, God changes our lives. It's not up to us to change our life. God will do it for us. All we got to do is obey the sense. Some have a sense right now that they need to pray and make things right with God because there's things going on in your life that are not right with God. You know it. 
And there's, it's not a thought, and it's not a feeling, it's a sense inside of you. And you know, you can talk around it all day, but you know in the depth of your soul that God wants you to get right with Him. You got things going on in your life that you shouldn't have. You're doing things in your life and you know are wrong. And you know without a doubt God's not pleased about it. How do you know that? That sense is God. Speak. All we have to do is obey God. Get back to it. All we have to do is obey God. God takes care of the change. You say, well, what about this, Pastor? Let God take care of that. Well, what about, let God take care of that. Well, you don't understand. Let God take care of that. That's God's business, not yours. Your business is to obey the leading of God. And here's the way it works. You come into a church service or you're around somebody, they tell you about Jesus, and there's that sense inside of you that you need to give Jesus your heart and be saved. Who is that? It ain't the flesh. It ain't the devil. Who else is left? It's God leading. Some here listening to me this morning, you have a sense that things going on in your life are not right. That you have some relationships that are pulling you down spiritually. Every time you get around them people, you come away bruised in the spirit, for lack of a better word. They're just killing you spiritually. You just can't be around them and keep the victory in Jesus. That sense is there. You need to break that relationship. How am I going to do it, Pastor? Just tell God that you want to obey Him and He'll take care of the rest of it. Some of you got attitudes. An attitude is a mindset. You need to change your attitude. You got the wrong attitude about things. Some of you got quick tempers. <laughs> Help me, Jesus. You need to deal with that. You need to obey God. Love your brother like yourself. I don't ever get mad at myself. Y'all get mad at y'all self? Slap yourself in the face? What'd you say? You better not say that to me no more. No, you don't do that. You love yourself. Well, if you love your neighbor like you love yourself, you sure ain't going to slap him. Or want to slap him. Some of us need to change our behavior. We, we need God to change our behavior. How do we do it? We start loving God. Some have a need, a sense that they need, more, need to become more involved in the church work. Yeah, yeah. Been coming for 42 years. And still sitting on a pew, not doing nothing. Have a sense. Have a sense about you. I need to get more involved. I, 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 I need to start singing. I need to start helping a teacher somewhere. I need to start getting involved. I need to be an usher. Say amen, Brother Mike. I need to be an usher. <laughs> I need to be a greeter. I need to, you have that sense. Well, if you don't obey that sense, then how do you expect God going to bless you? I believe 2021, this is my prophecy. I believe 2021 is going to be a year of change for the church of America. And it's up to us which way we change. Some, it's going to be a change for the better because we're going to love God with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our mind. Others, it's going to be a change in the other direction. And we're going to mess around and lose out with God. And judgment's going to fall on America. And the church is going to be gone. And everybody that ain't obeying God is going to be left. Yeah. Well, if you don't pick a time out some, at some point and say, today's the day I change, you'll never change. You understand that? I understand it better than most because my philosophy has always been about most things. Never do today what you can put off till tomorrow. And I got stuff Judy's been trying to get me to get do for five years. I still ain't even started. You know why? You've got to take a point and you've got to say, uh-oh, today's today. I'm changing today. I'm going to start obeying God today. No, I'm not going to wait till tomorrow. I'm not going to wait till I get that new job. I'm not going to wait till my windfall comes in. I'm going to do it today. I'm going to start obeying God today. You've got to start at some point in your life. Stand with me if you will. You've got to start at some point in your life. Here's the question that I have for you. How many wants God to make a change in your life during this new year? 
Maybe it's about your relationship with God. Maybe it's about your relationship with your family. Maybe it's about your relationship with your church. Maybe it's about your relationship with your co-workers. Maybe it's about your relationship in your neighborhood. Maybe it's something's going on in your life and you know that shouldn't be going on and you want to make a change. You're saying this morning, Pastor, I sense in my spirit I need to make a change. Maybe it's you want to take on more responsibility in the church to be a solid part of the church that the church can build on and reach other people. Maybe it's a work that the church needs to do that you know the church needs to do it and you felt led of the Lord to start it, but yeah, you look at what all it entails. Remember, all you got to do is be obedient. God provides the change. You don't have to change. You just have to be obedient. And if you'll obey, God will change. I don't know how that works, but if you feel a sense inside of your life this morning that I want this year to change me, you sense that. I want you to just step out more yet. I don't want you to get close together. I want you to stay five or six feet apart. I want you to come gather across the front. We're going to pray one final prayer. Right where you're at. I sense God's calling me. I sense God's calling me. Come on. Come on. God's dealing with about a dozen people in this church this morning. Come on. Come on, step on out. Come on, I'm waiting on you. I'm going to go on when you come on. Come on, I'm waiting on you. Some of y'all folks have been serving God 20 years. and God won't do a change in your life this week, this year. I want you to come on. Anybody else? Come on. Come on. I feel, I feel that sense. I, I, I just sense inside of me. I, I just have that sense. I, I just have that sense, Pastor. And I, I don't know what to do about it. Here's what you do. Just fall in love with God again. Fall in love with God. Fall in love with God. Here's what I want you to pray. I want you to pray it in your own way in this last prayer. I want you to pray like this. I want you to pray, Father, I sense that you're leading me today. And I've stepped out today to be obey you. And I'm trusting you to make a change in my life starting today. In Jesus' name, amen. Church, would you begin to pray? Father, we come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, God. We come for this church, God. But we come more than for this church, God. We come more than for these who, God, are obeying you, Lord. We come for more than that, God. We come for America, God. We come for the church of America, God, today. And we ask you, God, help us, Lord, to be obedient to you, Lord. Help us, God, to just obey you, Lord. Help us, Father, today that our lives might be placed in your hands, God. That our love for you, God, might be rekindled, God. That we might truly love love you with all of our heart, with all of our mind, and with all of our soul, Father. And God, that we might develop a love for our neighbors, God. Heavenly Father, that will cause us, God, to go out and reach them for the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. Father, today in the name of Jesus, here we are, God. We're just trusting you, Lord. All you said for us to do was obey you, God, and you'd make the change. And I'm expecting the change to happen today. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I'm changed. I'm looking for the change. Somebody say, I'm looking for the change.